Sometimes even when you have the best vacuum and absolute filter by most expensive top of the line dust collection system, you notice dust piling up on the top of it. And not just there, but everywhere, literally everywhere. Needless to say, this stuff is not healthy to breathe. Cleaning up dust that settles out of the air takes forever. It's an annoying thing to do both at your shop and in your home. One effective way to deal with it is do-it-yourself filtration. About a year ago, I decided to turn this general concept into some pre-made kits. While I worked at these, I had plenty of time to think about how I could refine the design. This is what I came up with. I'm calling these collectively the Model B. The most significant updates are to the frame that is now easier to assemble than ever, and you can choose from a wide range of fans and filter sizes. Each combination offers different benefits that make the design perfect for one location or another. If you want to build one of these in your wood shop, there are free plans for each size of filter. And if you want, you can buy these parts to upgrade it. This video will highlight my designs, but all the concepts that I talk about in this video are mainly intended to help you decide what sort of DIY quad filter might be best for your situation. I'm going to refer to this setup generally as a quad filter because according to a lot of commenters, this design has been around for decades well before the Corsi Rosenthal term was coined. Also, if this is a standard CR box, what is this and what is this? Well, they all have four filters, so let's just call them a quad filter. In the next video, you can see how these are assembled. This video is focused on general features of quad filters and where each one of these concepts is most effectively applied. No one likes to spend time maintaining any appliance and taping one of these together is time consuming. So to make filter changes simple and keep the design from looking overly industrial, I designed these clips that blend in as much as possible. Changing a filter on a Model B takes a minute or less. Some quad filters are the size of a piece of furniture. They are extremely efficient, but they are big and they don't have a silent mode. So having small filters and quiet fans can be a huge benefit, especially in your home. Some of these new fans that I've tested out barely make a sound if you don't want them to. A highly requested option is a ceiling or wall mount for these filters, but this concept will get a whole video to itself. If you want to remove smells and gases from your space in either your home or shop, you can piece together a few different items to make a 600 CFM filter that clocks in with about 10 pounds of activated charcoal. That's about as much as this $1,400 medical grade air purifier. Does this kit work as well as that pro grade hardware? Probably not, but it is less than half the price and it has higher airflow. Those are the basic updates to my third generation kit. Now let's take a detailed look at what you can get from each type of fan. For the shop, the most powerful choice is still this drum fan. I've used it for years and it's never failed to impress. Just because a fan is powerful doesn't make it a good option. I tried out this particular fan, looking to see if it could be better than the Caterpillar. It does move an extreme amount of air, but it is intensely loud. It also fails to beat the Caterpillar fan in a smoke test. So for now, this 1400 CFM fan is still the most powerful, cost-effective option that I have worked with. It is great for large spaces like a two-car garage or even larger spaces, and it can also work well in small spaces. The tone of sound is not unpleasant, and it's reasonably quiet on low. This thing can take on an intense amount of dust and just keep going. If performance matters, but you want the lowest price, the box fan is the way to go. Your standard box fan is fairly quiet and can move up to 1,000 cubic feet of air per minute. A large box fan like this Air King can do about 1,200 CFM. For comparison, your standard HEPA filter only puts out about a quarter of that amount. If you don't need maximum airflow, you don't have much space to spare, or you want a truly quiet option, the next two fans are the best options I've tested. But all of these features do come with a higher price. This admittedly good-looking 12-inch cloud lift from AC Infinity has a really nice wireless controller. On low, it barely makes a sound at all. On high, it moves about 1,100 cubic feet of air per minute, which is surprisingly good. And at this speed, it's reasonably quiet, about half as loud as the Caterpillar. Not only is this a great option for in-home use, it is my top choice for a ceiling-mounted fan. Not only is it an easy carry, but you can control it from a comfortable position. Thanks to the Healthy Home Guide channel and all the commenters for the idea to use this fan. 
Something that I've experimented with a lot this last year was inline fans. I started with these two low cost units, which work well, but are a bit unbalanced and fairly loud. If you want them at an acceptable sound level, you have to attach a duct. You really must do this. This 8 inch fan, on the other hand, is a lot more capable. The build quality on all AC Infinity products I have tested has been very good as well. Disassembled, these are really compact and very easy to attach to a flat surface. This makes them great for all sorts of projects. For small filters, this fan is my favorite option. The remote isn't wireless, but it does have 10 speeds and a very long cord if you want it. The first three speeds, up to about 300 CFM, are nice and quiet. If you push it to its limits at about 730 CFM, it is very loud, unless you put a duct on it. Ducting is not only good for sound control. If your setup allows for it, I highly recommend it in certain environments. My low-cost 12-inch inline fan here puts out about 950 CFM. That isn't as much as the drum fan, but you may not actually need the extra power. You can dramatically reduce the spread of dust if you reduce turbulence in the air. Take, for instance, the Caterpillar drum fan running in a 120-square-foot space. With the fan pointing up and out of the filter, dust gets blasted all over the place. A lot of that dust makes it back to the filter, but some will end up peppered all over surfaces in the room. If instead I point the fan into the filter box, air turbulence is reduced and dust more easily finds its way into the filter. Now we get to the ducted approach. In this method, there is virtually no turbulence in the air column. Air smoothly translates from the end of the duct on one side of the room all the way to the filter box on the other side of the room. In this process, it picks up all the dust in the air between those two points. So far, in small workspaces, I haven't tested any other method that was able to keep all the dust contained in one part of the room. Mounting fans to the ceiling is easy, and you can simply attach a flange to the top of the kit to hook up a duct. You don't need a charcoal filter on a system like this, but inline fans do enable this option. If your work produces low levels of smells or fumes of any kind, these will remove them if ventilation is not an option. For working with high VOC products or processes, always use ventilation. Do not rely on a carbon filter for anything but trace gases. Here is what VOC levels look like in my 3D print room over the course of a day. They tend to spike whenever I clean the machines and let some isopropyl alcohol fumes into the air, and then they level off. Then I kick on the carbon filter and it is able to remove all VOCs or gases from the air in about one hour. This is when the filter is fresh. I will do a whole video about VOC removal to explore how long these filters last. Lots of people have asked about removing smells from their homes, specifically cooking related smells. If you are in the market for a high carbon filter, this combination of parts might be your best option. Keep in mind that when you first crank this thing up, it may eject some loose bits of charcoal up into the air. You might want to do this outside or in a place where a little charcoal dust won't stain anything. Because a lot of people like to run these air filters in their basements, myself included, something to keep in mind is the position of gas appliances. If you have systems like this, you should not blow air directly at them. It can potentially disrupt the way that their exhaust system functions. So in this sort of scenario, a setup with controlled air circulation is best. I added some roll-up plastic walls down here that I can drop down when I'm doing something really dusty. The negative pressure inside the room constantly draws clean air from the outside of the enclosure. This keeps virtually all the dust from escaping the work area even when generating clouds of it. Systems that are not ducted do not perform this well in this sort of scenario. If you do have a sealed space, or you can't or don't want to run duct work, and you really need to pull massive amounts of dust from the air as fast as possible with a unit that is portable, this Caterpillar drum fan has been my go-to power plant for a few years. One contractor that ordered this kit was able to significantly reduce their cleanup times, and after I did my first drywall job, I can see why. Personally, I like to run this fan pointed into the filter box. With my original Model A, I discovered how well this configuration works in some scenarios. If the room is small or your workspace or power tool is close by, this can be a very efficient dust collection method. You can still make the Model A kit yourself, but a lot of people have asked me why I'm not selling these anymore. After about five months of ordering CNC wood parts, these are the scraps. They are either cracked or 
extremely warped or they're paper thin or they, they just don't fit together correctly. Sometimes the holes are in the wrong places. Um, it's about $3,000 worth of junk. So needless to say, I, I kind of wanted to take things in a bit of a different direction. So I bought a CNC machine to make parts with the highest level of precision. I also switched to plastic and aluminum that doesn't warp or require hours of sanding. After extensive testing, I found that the Model B with a drum fan performed just as well as the Model A. Not only is this kit less costly to build, four 20 by 30 inch filters are 30% cheaper than eight 16 by 20 inch filters. So long-term operating costs are lower as well. It's also a shorter design, so if you are using it as a dustbin, you can vacuum it out more easily. I have a video on adding pre-filters to disposable filters coming out soon. This is a great way to extend the life of your filters. This enclosed motor helps block dust from getting into the fan mechanism while running in the push configuration. An alternate workstation dustbin is this 12-inch cloudline fan. It also has an enclosed motor, but it appears to lose a fair amount of power when pointed into the filters. In this configuration, the fan appears to drop from about 1100 CFM to about 700 CFM. That's decent, but only about half as powerful as the cat fan. I want to say that the shape of the drum may have something to do with it. If you are working in a small space and want a really quiet fan, this may still be a good option. The 12 inch wall fan moves less air, but that allows the device to shrink in size. The drum fan actually puts out an air velocity that exceeds the airflow specifications for small air filters. This can cause dust particles to be pushed through the filter material and back into the room. All this brings us to one of the most important aspects of any DIY air filter design. You have to pick filters that are compatible with your fan. In any configuration, the filters will hold back the flow of air. Your goal is to reduce that effect to near zero when the filters are new. This is what low static pressure looks like. The dust is sucked right into the fan. And here is a visualization of high static pressure. Notice that the dust resists being pulled into the filter and makes a sizable mess in my living room. Static pressure rated in inches of water column is the industry measurement for this concept. 3M is great because they are the only company to print these numbers right on the filter. To run the calculation for a quad filter, we will take the actual airflow of our fan and divide that by 4 for each of the 4 filters. If our result is around 0.05, it means that the fan will be able to run virtually unimpeded by the initial resistance created by the filters. If the filters are too restrictive when they are new, they will wreck performance after they become dirty. So in short, only certain filter sizes are appropriate for each fan. To remove the most harmful ultrafine particles from the air, you should use a filter rated at MERV 13 or above. MERV 14 is definitely better. I ran a smoke test with new and used MERV 14 filters from Nordic Pure. Test one was with new filters, and the second test is with just shy of one pound of ultrafine wood dust stuck in the filters. On day one, they could clear smoke from the air in a 550 square foot garage in 50 minutes. After extensive use, they could still do it in 64 minutes. For comparison purposes, your average HEPA filter only performs that well if the filters are fresh out of the package. If your filters perform well for a long time, the device becomes cheaper to operate, and cheap is the whole idea behind DIY filtration. If you operate this filter in your home for several years, it may never collect one pound of dust. So far I've talked about filter size, but that's not the whole picture. The main factor that determines how efficient a filter can be is the amount of material that it is made from. Looking at a few of these, we can see that the 3M filter and this Air Doctor filter have significantly more pleats than the budget brands. It may come as a surprise to you that two or four inch thick filters don't actually provide the best performance. The best filters I have tested on quad filters are all 3M one inch filters. These can be fairly expensive compared to budget brands, so I will have a video out soon on how you can add pre-filters to your disposable filters so they last as long as possible. Many of these fans and filter sizes are new to me and I have not put them all through a rigorous smoke test yet, but I have tested the 20x20 20 20 and 20x30 20 inch filters extensively. Here's how fast a standard box fan and four 20x20 20 20 inch filters are able to remove incense smoke from the air using 3M filters. 
If you increase the airflow with an Air King box fan, you get about 20% more efficiency. With a Caterpillar drum fan or this 12-inch inline fan, the efficiency increases even more. Now let's see how the 20 by 20 inch filter compares to 20 by 30 inch filters. Under some conditions, if we reverse the direction of the drum fan, we put up the best numbers of all. When I have a chance to test out all these new fans and filters, the data will be available on my website. For now, here is the available clean air delivery rate data, or CADR. With higher airflow and large efficient filters, you will get the best possible performance from your quad filter. Here is a graph of filter cost versus performance for the 20 by 20 inch filters and 20 by 30 inch filters. The most important takeaway from all this data is that you should always try to pair the most powerful fan that suits your needs with the biggest filter that you can reasonably fit into your space. Hopefully by now you know exactly what sort of do-it-yourself air filter might be right for you, but if you still have questions, let me know in the comments. One last important thought about DIY air filtration is that manufacturers may not approve of alternate uses of their devices. This is the nature of DIY engineering. It might be effective, but these designs haven't been lab tested and they are most certainly not approved by any regulatory body or certified by any safety board. Though this is true for many fans, it is not the case for inline fans. When they are used in this way, they are doing exactly what they are designed to do. You can build one yourself. Just head over to my website to download free plans on how to make simplified wooden versions of these kits. Feel free to check out these pre-made kits at my shop. They are organized by fan with each listing offering only selected filter sizes appropriate for that device. I made a detailed video on how each one of these is assembled. There are also links in the description to pick up various fans, filters, or parts, like fan mounts, for your custom builds. I literally could not do any of this without that support. You all may have seen a few other air filter designs peppered throughout this video. In the next episode, I'll dive into woodworking cartridge filters and all the things you can and cannot do with them. I made a ton of these kits for this launch. If you want a free one, I will send it out to one of the first 300 that drop a relevant comment in the section below. Thanks for watching, everybody.